Hey everyone, Joshua Kirk here with you once again. Now it's time for episode 166 of Album of the Day, um, in which today I'm going to be reviewing the latest album from a Seattle-based singer-songwriter uh, who's been working as a solo artist for over a decade now and has uh, put out a few albums for Matador Records and definitely has gained a, a lot of widespread acclaim uh, for his brand of what some people may call psychedelic folk music. Uh, music. Others may have called it, like, I've heard uh, this artist's style of music described as, like, goth glam, especially with, like, his last record. Um, and the artist I am talking about is, uh, is the solo artist, uh, uh, Mike Hadreas, uh, but uh, mostly known uh, by uh, his, uh, uh, by, uh, the, like, I'm talking about the singer-songwriter known as Mike Adreas, but better known under his stage name, Perfume Genius, uh, in which I'm here to review his, uh, most recent album, which dropped on May the 5th this year, uh, his fourth studio album, and the album is called No Shape, and, uh, as you can see, this is, uh, I got it on vinyl, as you can see right here. Uh, the artwork looks really nice on the vinyl, by the way. I definitely wanted to review this record because it's like easily one of my uh, most favorite records of the year. It's like my art pop album of the year, in fact. Um, uh, you may remember in my video of my favorite records of 2017 so far, this was number one, even though I would say uh, Kendrick Lamar's Damn is probably beating this at the moment, but like this is still nonetheless just an amazing record. Uh, so that's why I wanted to, you know, give you my thoughts on it. There's ten songs on the record. It's over 44 minutes, released on his longtime label, which is a uh, classic indie rock label, Matador Records, which uh, of course uh, currently the label for other artists like Sp like Car Seat Headrest and stuff like that. And uh, anyway, really nice gatefold here because like you see like the lyrics and a uh, nice photo of Mike Andreas and then there's the credits and stuff. And uh, they didn't list uh, the instruments or like who played what on each song in the liner notes, but I did look at, but I did look that sort of uh, in, look up that sort of information on Perfume Genius's website. So I actually have all that instrumentation and stuff written down on this piece of paper. And this is produced by an LA music producer, uh, Grammy-winning producer Blake Mills. Side A, side B, and I will show you something. It's really cool. I have it on clear vinyl. I bought it at Soundgarden, uh, one of my favorite record stores in uh, Baltimore, Bell's Point to be exact. And then there's the other vinyl, side C, side D. And that's uh, the uh, that's my vinyl copy of uh, the new Perfume Genius album, No Shape. Hmm. Now, Perfume Genius is definitely one artist I've been meaning to check out for a little while. I mean, I was kind of aware that he was around in the past, you know, like in 2012 with Put Your Back Into It, as well as like, of course, 2014, pretty successful year for him. He put out Too Bright, which... Uh, received a lot of critical acclaim, and I think, uh, like, even maybe got a little Grammy or something. But No Shape is really my first time listening to him, and I will say, I'm very impressed by what I'm hearing here on this record. I mean, this is definitely a very uh, grand, well-produced, very cathartic new record right here. Um, I'm kind of going to talk... Uh, about the album track by track, sort of taking you through the whole track listing 
uh, starting with the opening track, Other Side, which uh, starts out as kind of this somber little quiet piano ballad uh, with a very beautiful sort of uh, like uh, group vocals uh, to pair with uh, Mike Andreas's just very uh, lovely lead vocal, sort of like a little spiritual hymn of some sorts in terms of like the lyrics and you know kind of uh, the vocals and stuff but it somehow feels like just a a, a really nice uh, way to open up the record so it starts out kind of quiet and then all of a sudden these booming synths and huge backup vocals just you know kind of rush in really adding a sense of power and catharsis to it which really does instantly pull you in for the rest of the record, uh, which uh, it eventually transitions into the album's lead single, Slip Away. And let me say, uh, the song Slip Away would have to be one of my top five favorite singles of, of 2017 so far. It is just an incredible song with just beautiful, uh, very uh, awesome production, including the kind of uh, jungle, like kind of tribal marimbas and percussion at the beginning uh, before uh, eventually we're getting like some guitars and uh, some like guitars and like some rising synths and uh, some piano as well. Well, and kind of these big like uh, bass drums and uh, the lyrics on this song are definitely uh, one example of uh, Mike Andreas really showing off his songwriting skills, I think. I think. Like, it's definitely, uh, like, optimistic, but at the same time, definitely, uh, has, uh, a very relatable sort of sentiment to it. Uh, and to it. He's sort of talking about how he doesn't want to hold back, and he, you know, wants to break free. Free. And, uh, he has some really poetic, uh, sort of lyrics on here, like the line of, of God is singing through your body and I'm carried by the sound and just an incredible chorus especially when he just hits with you know just a very passionate vocal performance uh, really kind of adding a lot of power to the lines of oh love they'll never ever take they'll like with lines of oh love they'll never break the shape we take uh, baby let all them voices slip away just, uh, like, an incredible song, like, it's definitely one track, like, right from the first time I heard it, I was just like, uh, yes, this is an incredible song. Um, the song Just Like Love is definitely, uh, another, uh, highlight for me because of, like, uh, uh, the lyrics, uh, sort of depict, uh, this person that kind of, you know, has these things that he has, like, these fears of, and, uh, trying to... And like uh, trying to kind of uh, silence those little uh, voices in his head, trying to uh, uh, put him down and stuff like that, like that, uh, and sort of uh, trying to walk, uh, and really does add quite a bit of uh, effectiveness to the lines of, uh, so if they'll talk, give them every reason. For child, you walk just like love, uh, and also it is uh, definitely aided by such a beautiful vocal performance. Formance like he definitely has a very sort of distinctive voice that you could instantly pick him out of a lineup and lineup, and it's uh, amazing how uh, you know someone who's relatively young could really uh, have such a you know a beautiful singing voice. But I also want to note the production on this song is definitely gorgeous as well. The very delicate strings, as well as uh, the finger-plucked guitars, uh, the synths, as well as the very odd uses of different instruments, including tabla, baritone guitar, and even a marxophone. <laughs> uh, the song Go Ahead has kind of this uh, sort of uh, like odd electronic sort of edge to it uh, with a pretty interesting beat and and all the different percussive textures as well as uh, kind of these uh, whooshing synth sounds kind of uh, sort of 
synth sounds kind of punching in and out of the song, which I do think sounds really nice. And lyrically, this is a song, basically him sort of talking about how he uh, feels, he kind of feels left out, because like, you know, people are making fun of him because uh, he, because he's like gay and stuff like that. Um, uh, sort of him sort of uh, saying, uh, saying, you know, sort of telling him to kind of uh, go ahead and try to, you know, bring him down because of uh, kind of his differences from uh, most other people and stuff. Well, so it's kind of a song about him just being kind of an outsider a little bit. bit. And also I do like uh, the kind of uh, psychedelic uh, vocal harmonies as well as uh, the beautiful strings that eventually do uh, come in during the chorus. Uh, the song Valley is a much more stripped back, much more quiet sort of song, uh, driven by acoustic guitars, bass, strings, a little bit of electric guitar as well, and some piano you know, and stuff, but it's definitely a great track because it's definitely one song that really does uh, show off his sort of skills as a storyteller, and he's sort of uh, diving into kind of uh, uh, a relationship a little bit with this song. Uh, song. Song, and he brings up uh, lyrics like um, uh, a note from uh, his uh, uh, a note from his lover's daughter, uh, and a drawing of of three flowers that he still keeps with him. Him and wonders, does she still want to sing? Um, and and sort of uh, saying to his uh, uh, boyfriend, how long must we live right before we don't even have to try? And like the song definitely does sound beautiful, and I like the part, I like that bridge in the middle where all the instruments drop out except for the strings as well as uh, the odd mellotron uh, tron, and some vocals and he uh, sort of and he says uh, like I hear the sound of a million drums with no beat uh, uh, violins with no melody and I'm sick with it uh, uh, quiet, really showing off a sense of uh, catharsis and beauty in it pairs so well with the strings, for sure. The song Reef uh, follows that up. It's definitely a much more kind of energetic song instrumentally. Uh, and uh, it's definitely a song that I think it's a really important point on the record because he really does sort of dig in deep to kind of uh, the meaning of the title of the record, No Shape. This is kind of what, what this album's title comes from, this song, which is kind of a him explaining how uh, he's not a big fan of his body because of like different kind of health issues that he's had with it and stuff uh, and he and he kind of s talks about how you know if if he could make it happen he would most certainly want to leave his body and stuff like that and you know, just be free and stuff like that it's definitely uh, it definitely it must feel very cathartic for him to just kind of head on, let it all out, and stuff like that. Uh, uh, like, catharsis, definitely. Uh, if, if there was, like, like, a musical definition for the word, this would be it, in my opinion. Hmm. Uh, be it, in my opinion. And uh, definitely a uh, great track. Uh, the uh, very energetic instrumental, and, and also just some incredible vocal work, especially towards the end, where... Uh, where he's doing almost this kind of, uh, these almost kind of uh, yelped vocals. It sounds kind of like a, a cross of like, a, of, of say, yeah, 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 as well as like, it even kind of sounds like a yodel a little bit at the end. So, so like some very unique sort of uh, vocal presence going on in this track, especially towards the end of the song. Um, <clears throat> Actually, towards the end of the song, and I like how sort of uh, almost kind of dark the instrumental is with the kind of grimy, fuzzy guitars, guitars as well as uh, kind of the, the weird piano as well. Uh, weird piano as well. Uh, then we go into yet another ballad with the song Every Night, which uh, we're introduced uh, to uh, the odd sound of a guitar own, which is uh, 
that's the instrument playing the little like subdued bass line that you're hearing at the beginning. And uh, he sort of, you know, talks about how even though there's like nothing around him, he somehow feels like some supernatural kind of spirit is kind of watching over him. And he kind of says, quiet, I brace for the drift every night. Uh, nothing has moved for some time. Still, I'm up. So, like, there's nothing around, but yet he definitely does have this sort of, uh, sort of vision of it sort of, uh, watching over him, but also kind of looking at, at it as somewhat of a positive thing, sort of thing. And when he says, sister, let me up, his performance definitely does, you know, it's not just, like, what he says, but the way he says his words is just, uh, awesome. Uh, awesome over the really uh, kind of uh, delicate strings. strings. But then we have the song Choir, which is like right after a little bit of that sort of uh, uh, calmer piece. While this is a more stripped back track on it, this is the one song that I think has that little bit of bite that I think is kind of much needed for some point on the record uh, with the kind of uh, really intense kind of uh, creepy strings, as well as, uh, kind of the, uh, as well as kind of the buzzing keyboard drone in the background. And he's sort of, uh, then describing this supernatural spirit as some sort of evil kind of going over him. And he definitely does give off a vocal performance that, you know, has sort of a, uh, and, and his kind of, uh, quiet, whispered vocals uh, have almost a kind of surreal quality to them, which I do think sounds pretty cool and definitely uh, does uh, pretty much, uh, eh, and it definitely does pretty much, uh, much uh, like he feels like incredibly close to the ears, like ears uh, pretty much. Mm -hmm. it's pretty much, like it's definitely kind of uh, pained, but at the same time, and, you know, strangely, like, uh, easy to listen to his vocals on this track. Mm. Track. The song Die For You is definitely uh, one of, like, in my opinion, probably, like, uh, the sexiest song on the record uh, because of, like, uh, the way it sounds musically, but also because, kind of, the lyrics. I mean, I did look up on Genius that apparently this song is uh, about, like, uh, like, erotic, like, uh, asphyxiation, which is kind of like uh, a type of uh, sexual activity where, like, uh, the people having uh, that activity are, like, uh, activity are, like, kind of losing, are, are kind of, like, uh, losing air and kind of, uh, losing air and kind of getting uh, dizzy spells and stuff like that, which you can definitely kind of hear that in lyrics, like, each and every breath I spend, you are collecting, uh, but also definitely giving off a really uh, beautiful uh, vocal performance, definitely making this track definitely a true highlight for me on the record, because record, he's definitely uh, real, like uh, uh, the raw emotion that he's showing off in his vocals definitely is one thing I did pretty much gravitate towards kind of right out of the gate when I first listened to this record. <clears throat> gate when I first listened to this record, pretty much. And also, love the instrumentation on this song. Uh, it's got, like, it's driven by uh, Relitzer Electric Piano, and also has all these weird, like, uh, vocal noises that, uh, like, I heard they're, like, trumpet noises or something that Mike Adreas is making. Like, he's vocalizing, but kind of doing it uh, into a trumpet, uh, doing it through a trumpet, which definitely does sound really nice on there, by the way. Hmm. Boy. And also, like, uh, love the strings, uh, love the strings and, you know, the kind of jazzy bass and dr bass line and drums on the song. Hmm. The song was definitely very nice, too. Hmm. To, and it is uh, pretty nice hearing uh, Mike Adreas's falsetto with uh, Alan Weifel's like uh, baritone backup vocals, which Alan Weifel's is actually like kind of his partner who like plays keyboards in his band and sings and 
stuff like that, and does, you know, play a little bit of keys and sing a little bit on this uh, album, too. too. Uh, then we get a collaborative track with the song Sides featuring uh, Way's Blood on it. Blood on it, which is definitely kind of a collaborative writing process because it's Mike uh, and uh, Natalie Mary writing the lyrics together, and Mike Hadreus and Blake Mills, the producer of the record, writing the music together. And uh, I definitely let, love the production that he's uh, done on this song, the uh, wailing guitars and the organ, and, uh, a really cool kind of funky bass line as well. And uh, the strings also sound really nice. And this song is sort of, uh, sort of addressing sides of this current relationship that he's in how uh, he's like fallen in love but at the same time it definitely uh, it doesn't mean that it doesn't also bring a little bit of challenges along with it so like so like I think uh, it's so like I think the first verse even though it's sung by Mike Andreas I think is actually told from uh, the point of view of his boyfriend or something like that that sort of uh, uh, telling him to trust and trust and sort of asking him why still no love and love and where do you go sometimes idle and empty eyed this loop is wearing thin I won't be here when it ends but then uh, the second verse told from uh, sort of Mike's point of view which is sung beautifully by Way's Blood aka Natalie Mary uh, Lee Mary sort of uh, says mm says how uh, they don't want to start uh, their own game that they play yeah, play and like the lyrics uh, on the second half are definitely incredible like sure I like the I love the part where Mike sings but I feel it's really the part where uh, Way's blood comes in with her vocals where it really does uh, sort of hit you right in the feels uh, and it's just be and it's just downright beautiful I mean I didn't know that like a collaboration here could uh, uh, be this touching. Uh, the song Braid uh, is uh, another one of the quieter tracks on here. Mostly Mike's voice and a relitzer as well as the occasional flourishes of piano and then eventually towards the end organ as well as uh, a kora which is like an African harp type instrument which definitely does sound really gorgeous on there. Um, on there and uh, and it's really like the lyrics on the second half that I definitely do think are really so memorable like secret is braided in between uh, feel it shaking and set free free heavens break uh, make my name lose its meaning and every and every harm is so is lovingly washed away uh, that la that latter of the lines sung beautifully uh, by uh, Natalie Maring actually sings on this track too. Uh, the song "Run Me Through" is definitely another one that I definitely want to note out as a great as a highlight for me uh, because of like the kind of dark lyrics as well as uh, kind of uh, the really cool uh, sort of. It's definitely got a very unique sort of groove to it as well with the Rhodes piano and uh, really cool bass line and some interesting percussion uh, textures towards the end and like uh, a couple ones that really stick out to me are like uh, no ins just outs pump and iker bucket my mouth and like and following that first verse Mike just breaks out into just this beautiful just haunting vocal performance that just like uh, I'm almost moved to tears it's so uh, beautiful when he just kinda you know uh, breaks out of or where he just kinda breaks out with definitely a very uh, very uh, cool uh, vocal performance which is paired over uh, some kind of droney keyboards and fluttering recorders that come in too uh, which actually sound really nice too um, nice too and then it's got kind of this more driving 
uh, groove for like uh, the second half of the song. Mm. So with lines like, Satin mat my dewiness, skin so soft it sickens. That's poeticism right there. Uh, this is right there, and we also do get nice touches of like a piano, of like a piano, a kind of distorted uh, tone, tuned down guitar, as well as down guitar, as well as the twinkling sound of a Celeste too. It's definitely a great track because it definitely has so much attention to detail going on with the production, as well as with the vocals as well. And even though the lyrics are few. Definitely enough to really kind of uh, stick with you for a little while. Um, and then it closes out with the track Alan, which uh, of course it gets its name from uh, and is a tribute to his uh, musical uh, partner, if you will, Alan Weifels. Um, Fools and Fools, and it definitely is sort of like a, a nice kind of, uh, and it's definitely kind of like this lullaby-esque kind of uh, track uh, that definitely does sort of, uh, uh, that definitely is a nice little kind of optimistic end to the album. Like, uh, did you notice we sleep through the night? Uh, but also kind of declaring in the chorus, like, you need me, rest easy, I'm here, how weird. Um, weird, and he just gives off just an awesome, just, uh, a vocal performance that, like, you know, really does tug at your heartstrings whenever you listen to it. And also, probably my favorite line on the song would have to be the one of, uh, thought I'd hide, uh, maybe leave something secret behind. And it's paired with, uh, just kind of stripped back instrumentation, a piano and synth and keyboards, uh, but it's really just, like, aided by his vocal performance. Like, this song is just so beautiful, like, I almost uh, cry whenever I listen to it. It is just, uh, it, it is definitely just uh, so beautiful. I mean, I don't remember the last time a song really did that to me since, like, uh, the song the song Nude by Radiohead off of the album in Rainbows. Uh, bows. So that's saying something. Mm -hmm. Saying something. Like, yeah, this is just an incredible record. Definitely a solid one from front to back. You can tell that I definitely do uh, love this record because I haven't really said anything uh, negative about it because I don't really have anything bad to say about it uh, say about it at all. So, at all. And I definitely uh, can't wait to uh, go back and listen to his older records. I've heard this record is, like, by far his most ambitious and cathartic yet, and how his ambition is broader than ever, which I can definitely see that, even though I'd have to uh, go back to listen to his older stuff before I can really kind of, you know, be able to kind of say that, but I'm definitely going to give No Shape a 9 out of 10, because this is just an amazing record. I probably have one of the most positive reviews of this record, besides maybe the Pitchfork review, which is like an 8.8 .8 out of 10. Um, mm -hmm. And uh, definitely uh, check out this record, uh, and definitely, uh, and uh, hopefully when you listen to it, you will definitely have the same kind of, uh, like, uh, just positive feelings about it like I do. So that's my review of the new Perfume Genius album, No Shape. I'll see you for episode 167.